Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and today we are doing the second of the three main statistical tests that you need to know for AQA A-level geography. Now as I said before in my previous videos, which I'll probably leave links to in the description box, when you sit AQA A-level geography papers, you'll have six mark data response questions, but some of them will be replaced with statistical tests that you might need to do instead. Two of them being Spearman's rank and chi-squared, the one that I'm going to be doing with you today. These questions could replace any of the six mark data response questions you get in either papers, so it's important you know how to do them, but it's also important to see how you know every single step, because for the six marks you may be told you have to fill in the whole question, you may have to be given half of it and then interpret it, you don't know, so which is why we need to give you the full how to calculate it, and there is another um, example of how you would do it on the exam paper. There's another video which I will be posting later this week, so keep your eyes open for that, but we're gonna get a move on. But please also remember to like, comment, subscribe, and follow my Instagram handle, Jamie the underscore geographer, because this will be where I leave links to the videos. This will be where the connection to my YouTube channel is and notifications, and also where you can message me for the PowerPoint or any other documents that you might find useful. But we'll get on with basically explaining what it is. So the chi-squared technique is commonly used for testing relationships between categorical variables. So it's similar to Spearman's rank. It basically tests how, if there is a level of relationship between something, but in a different way. It's based on a null hypothesis. So a null hypothesis is something that is the idea that there's no relationship between the two variables. So that an example of that would be a null hypothesis is there is no relationship between the level of rainfall in an area and plant growth. Obviously, we know there is because more rainfall means more access to water, let a greater level of photosynthesis. But using the chi-squared test, you can actually disprove this and reject the null hypothesis. It aims to measure whether your variables are equally distributed between the groups. And when I say groups, that could be anything. That could be um, test results between different classes, um, the level of plant growth in different areas of that receive different levels of rainfall, and that's the example that we're going to be using here in the AQA syllabus. The only chi-squared question they've asked so far, which means they could probably ask another one, is based off um, the, the rate of erosion near a coastline, for example. So it could be anything as long as basically we want to prove that there is a relationship and it's equally distributed, that some areas are affected more than others. So how will you be given the question? It will always start with two variables that you want to investigate. And you'll be given a scenario that you're going to be in. So it could be an area or the number of months in it or a location. And it'll be laid out for you in a table. You won't need to draw it. You'll just need to fill it in. But you need to know the full process and how to do it. This test can be a replacement for one of your six mark questions, as I've said before. And arguably, I think it's easier than Spearman's rank because in the table they give you, they actually show you the steps that you have to complete anyway. And as I've written before, the example that they've actually already done is in paper one, coastal systems and landscapes. So there is an example for that, which I will be posting later this week. So this is the formula for calculating chi-squared, where it is the sum of O minus E squared over E. And that looks complicated, it really isn't. And I'll explain how we do that step by step. But O is the level of observed frequency. So that's the actual value when you've gone out into your field to do that. So an actual value is, so say we wanted to investigate the level of plant growth. So area A had 64 plants, area B had 49 plants, and area C had 31 plants. That's the observed because that's what we're saying. But your expected frequency, your E value, is your average of the total values saying that there is an equal number of plants distributed between each of the three areas because chi squared is based off a null saying there is no relationship, therefore, would expect an equal amount to each level. So we'll start off basic. Steps you're given are you have to find the two variables you're investigating, our example here being the number of plants in an area or the level of rainfall. Then you make a hypothesis and a null hypothesis. So an example we've got here is the null is there is no relationship between the level of plants in an area and the level of rainfall. There is a relationship between the level of plants in an area and the level of rainfall. That would be your hypothesis as opposed to your null when you've got to write both out. 
the idea of the null hypothesis is that the two variables are independent. There is no relationship between them. There is no relationship between the level of rainfall and the level of plant growth. There is no relationship to the level of studying a person does, the number of hours into the, number, the level of their grade. That's the idea. That's what the null hypothesis is trying to get you at. You then use this hypothesis, this null, to predict an expected result that the idea of the plants found in each area are going to be the number of equal in each area. So again, in my example, if you've got 144 plants in total, then we expect 48 plants to be in each area because we're doing it based off an equal distribution level. And then we want to calculate or find our observed result. This one you'll have to find in the field when you're going out, when you're doing your data, but you'll be given this in the question, obviously, but this is also interesting if you have to calculate it for your NEA and your field work. Then once we have this, you need to calculate our x squared value, but we'll come to that in a minute. So we're gonna start off with a basic example. A student wants to investigate if there is a relationship between the number of plants in an area and the amount of rainfall different areas in the UK receive. Is question basic start. His null hypothesis is as follows. There is no relationship between the amount of rainfall in an area and the number of plants in an area. That's his null, he has stated it. He investigated the following areas and found the following results. Area A had a high rainfall and found to have 64 plants in this region. Area B had a medium level of rainfall and was found to have 49 plants in the region while area C had a low level and only had 39 plants in this region. Calculate the chi-squared value and assess if the null hypothesis is correct. Six marks. Like I said, that is your, uh, your example. If you weren't given a data response question, if you had to calculate chi-squared instead, that is what you could use, and it will be a six-mark question. Won't be anything more, won't be anything less. So this is how you'll be given it. You'll be given this table. It could be given completely blank and then you've got to spend six marks doing it or you could be given it half filled in you have to fill in the first half which is three marks then you have to uh, assess and respond to the final result you're given which is the other three marks so let's have a look firstly we need to input the data we've been given into a table then we fill in the data so we'll start here our expected values is 48 for each of them why are you wondering that like i said it's all of them, a total number of plants divided equally between the three areas. So our expected value is 48 because 64 plus 49 plus 31 equals 144 between the three areas. And 144 divided by three because there's three areas is 48. So without even looking at our data, we're going to expect there to be 48 in each of those areas. But in reality, you know, that's different because our observed values read the following, that in area A, there's 64 plants, area B, there's 49, and area C, there's 31. Now, before we've even calculated our test, we've got a good idea there actually is gonna be a strong relationship between the level of rainfall and the number of plants, because we're already seeing a large difference between the observed and the expected values, with area A being much higher than the expected, and area C being much lower than the expected. Then we need to calculate our O minus E value. So for area A, it's going to be 16 because it's 64 minus 18, which equals 16, because we have to do our observed minus our expected. Same for area B, 48 minus 49, 1, 40, uh, and then we've got 31 minus 48, which equals 17. Easy enough. Then we need to square those values. This is where we do them. So for example, here we're moving on to area C, where it's 289 for its O minus E squared value because minus 17 times minus 17 or minus 17 squared equals 289. Remember, you'll have a calculator for this. You won't need to know this sum in your head. And finally, we do the O minus E squared over E value, which is 5.33, 0.02 and 6.02. So for example, 0.02 for area B is because 49 minus 48 squared, like we calculated, over 48 has given us 0.02, which is basically, if we simplified that, that could be 1 divided by 48, which was 0.02. Then you've got those values, easy peasy and all done. 
Once we have those values, we need to find the total of the three of them. And here we've got them because our final O minus E squared over E value is 11.37. Why is that? Well, it's because it's 5.33 for area A, 0.02 for area B, and 6.02 for area C, which gives us 11.37. This is known as our X squared value, the main result. By now, if you would have to have filled this in, you probably would have had all the marks. If you had given half of this, you'd probably access three out of your six marks by now. And we're nearly there already. That's all we have to do. So finally, we've now calculated the x squared value, which we've shown to be 11.37. And as mentioned before, the x squared value shows whether or not there is a significant difference between your observed and your expected values. But we've only got that number, so how do we know? So if there's a significant difference, this suggests that there is a relationship between the two variables that you're investigating, but we need to test it against a critical value. This is the only way we can assess if there's a different level between the different areas that we were investigating. And your value of 11.37 needs to be higher than the critical value, like I've written here. If your value is larger, then there's a significant difference, and thereby we can reject the null hypothesis, basically saying, there is a relationship between these two variables. And to do this, we need to calculate our degrees of freedom and our significance table. But we will be given this in the exam as well, where you'll be given the portion of the critical value table that you need. So the significance table is the table of values that allows you to assess the level based on the degrees of freedom and the number or the number of categories you're given, and thereby allowing you to know if there's a significant relationship between your two variables. I've just got this one off the internet. This is a chi-squared significance table. Um, note how it is different to your Spearman's rank table because they've been calculated differently and thereby your values will be different. The significance table for chi-squared is going to be given below, but you need to calculate your degrees of freedom. And to calculate DF or degrees of freedom, you need to do N minus one, where N is the number of categories you've used. In this example, it's the number of locations we've used such as area A, B, and C. So to calculate our degrees of freedom, we do N minus one, which is three minus two, which is three minus one even to give us two. And because we've had this, our, we know our degree of freedom is two. So we're only gonna focus on the highlighted column we've been given. I've noticed in a uh, question in number one of this one that I've accidentally put three minus two, please ignore that. It's meant to say three minus one because that is how you calculate it and focus on the degrees of freedom level two, because we had three areas, A, B, and C. Therefore, we're only focusing on this column. To test the greatest level of significance, we look at the 0.01 level here, where my cursor is at 9.21. Because our value, 11.37, is higher than the critical value, there is a significant difference. This thereby states that there is only a 0.01 over 1 probability that our data occurred by chance or a 1% chance that our data has occurred due to uh, mixed results, maybe human error. But keep in mind, this shows that there's a significant difference, but it doesn't confirm their relationship. It shows there is a relationship between the number of plants and the level of rainfall due to data and there being evidence. And that is what you must say. And you must also note here that we reject the null hypothesis. That is what they want to see as well as examiners. You must reject the null hypothesis and state the new relationship. And that's all you need to do. Basic, quick and simple. It won't be as hard as you're given in the exam as I have here. This is because you're going to give them the majority of the data. But remember, if you have to give a written response to this, you must say, However, this does not prove the link, it provides evidence, as I've written in bold, and you must state that in your conclusion. Do not say it confirms, it provides evidence. And that is all that I will ask you for, for six marks. Thank you guys, I thought today was a much shorter video, but I hope you enjoyed it. Please again, remember to like, comment, subscribe. Um, I've asked, people have asked me, do they want to be friends on YouTube? Yes, absolutely, that would be great. Please let me know how that happens, because I'm still new. And if you need any access to these PowerPoints just for brief things or to give you a written example, I will happily send you all of them. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time.